And this recording will be posted to the county's contracting opportunities page, um, as well as we will create a written document for those questions that we can answer today, as well as those that we're not able to answer in the moment during the session. Just making sure the recording's going, great, okay. And we'll have those documents up for you in the next several days. So speaking of questions, please type them into the chat as they come up. And before we go further, I do want to acknowledge this project is funded by a Prop 68 Coastal Resilience Grant from the Ocean Protection Council. So we're grateful to the state of California for their support of this exciting project. So I'm going to step through the content in the RFP, really the key considerations, um, and then open it up to your questions. So some of the broad context of where this project is coming from. Marin County has made significant progress to date on responding to sea level rise. In 2016, the county completed a vulnerability assessment for the ocean coast that goes into great detail on exposures, assets at risk, under select near, medium, and long-term sea level rise scenarios. And then in 2018, the county completed an ocean coast sea level rise adaptation report that presented numerous adaptation concepts and sort of a menu of possible strategies for Marin's seven coastal communities. So today, our overall objective is to move our work substantially forward, that next stage of analysis and further detail. So we're focusing in at a community scale for adaptation planning in Stinson Beach, which is the area of West Marin most immediately at risk from sea level rise. And the intended outcome of this Stinson Beach Adaptation and Resilience Collaboration, I'm going to start calling the Stinson ARC, the, the overall outcome is a long-term implementable adaptation strategy roadmap that can conserve as a cohesive adaptation framework addressing critical infrastructure, natural resources, and community assets and risks in the Stinson Beach area. We really want to robustly delineate some feasible adaptation options that take us to mid-century, the three and a half feet of sea level rise consistent with state guidance, and then sufficiently detail from there to the end of century so that we can support the development of some adaptation pathways. This project balances numerous goals. And I just want to note key among those goals, we are actively soliciting community input and reflecting diverse stakeholder concerns and interests. It's a goal to ensure resilience of the beach itself and equitable public access to Stinson's coastal resources into the future. It is a goal to position stakeholders to continue engaging with adaptation efforts in Stinson Beach after this planning process is complete. And it's a goal to document some actionable lessons learned on future adaptation planning. But we're gonna be doing this in West Marin and beyond. So under this request for proposals, CDA is seeking to analyze more specific adaptation strategies and place them in pathways that detail the near and medium term adaptation solutions while identifying sequencing and decision points for the foreseeable future. And potential strategies may include nature-based options, structural adaptations, and long-term realignment of infrastructure and structures. We also really need to develop and apply evaluation criteria that assess feasibility, technical efficacy, environmental impact, social equity, and economic factors, both for the individual adaptation strategies and those adaptation pathways. I promise that was my longest slide. So the adaptation planning process, you know, it must focus around community concerns as well as community values and visions for what a resilient future looks like. But when we talk about the community, it, it's really broad. This includes Stinson residents and landowners, local businesses, historically excluded and underserved community members, others in Marin and beyond who recreate at Stinson, non-governmental organizations, and other interested parties. And I put this slide up to show that sustained engagement of that diverse community of stakeholders is going to require much more than just the six public meetings called out in task two of the RFP. So while the consultants and what we're talking about today with this RFP, are gonna play a critical role in delivering public meetings. 
I'm showing here in one of the boxes, I, I want folks to be aware that there are other components that actively invite substantive community input into the adaptation planning process. So it's CDA's goal to empower community to understand the possibilities and limitations of different adaptation strategies and to document potential pros and cons and different stakeholder interests and concerns across adaptation options. So to the study area of this process, there are no prescribed spatial boundaries to the Stinson Beach Arc planning process. This map is to provide some context. The purple outline shows the study's you know, real focus around the community of Stinson Beach, the developed areas, the sand spit development. That blue outline delineates a broader planning area because we're considering the whole ecological context of Bolinas Lagoon, the upslope watersheds that affect the planning area, and those boundaries include all the way up to the Bolinas Ridge. We've also included Highway 1, the Shoreline Highway, which is a critical route in and out of Stinson Beach. There's a really broad planning area to consider here and may require integration at different levels during the adaptation planning and engineering process. Also to note, planning activities in Stinson Beach are really layered. So this large blue circle shows the different county planning efforts that are underway and how the Stinson Beach arc relates closely to these and quite closely to issues under the local coastal plan. All these different county planning efforts that are mentioned in the RFP are going to inform and be part of what gets integrated and carried through the Stinson Beach arc process. On top of that, We've got county planning and policy efforts. There's also numerous adaptation planning projects and strategies that are in various stages of development for assets within Stinson. And key ones I've shown here in these green ovals, they're led by numerous federal, state, local landowners and asset managers in the Stinson Beach Bolinas Lagoon area. So CDA, our agency has done significant work developing relationships with these asset managers and compiling data and resources on their efforts to date. And as a project manager, I'll be working very closely with the selected firm to integrate this complicated context into the, Boleyn, the Stinson Beach Arc Cross project. And that's what's noted in task 1.2 of the RF. This is a graphic about our project team structure. I recognize it's pretty different than the usual approach where we'd have a consultant leading a team of subs. Um, this did evolve because as I showed in our community engagement graphic, we have many sort of active fronts needed to carry this process. And some pieces such as some beach visitation studies and process design needed to happen on the earlier end before we got this core adaptation planning and environmental engineering component underway. So as the project manager for the Stinson ARC, I will schedule, host, and facilitate monthly project team meetings with all consultants um, to ensure we're integrating the work effectively. And to be really clear, we will kick off, once this a firm is hired, we'll kick off with a full project meeting team to arrive at a shared work plan and schedule, communication protocols, file sharing platform, all the necessary pieces to have in place. And I will note, of interest to applicants, the timelines and specific deliverables for the economic analysis and ecological analysis support, that's gonna be refined in consultation with the selected consultant firm under this current RFP so that we can ensure that those timelines, data assumptions, communication requirements, contract provisions are all working across all parties. As far as budget, we do have a total budget of up to $180,000 available under this contract. This table indicates how we anticipate the budget breaking down relative to the areas of effort in the RFP scope of work. And of course, the boundaries between tasks and how the budget shakes out really depends on your approach to this scope. So in your proposal, you are welcome to suggest whatever budget breakdown best supports your anticipated project approach. And I'll just reiterate a note from the RFP, since this project is funded by a Proposition 68 grant from California Ocean Protection Council, the state bonded funding rules will apply. That includes insurance requirements and overhead limits, so just something to be aware of as you structure your budget. A look at the RFP schedule. Next up is proposal submission deadline of Wednesday, December 8th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard, and depending on the number of proposals received, 
consultant interviews will either be ahead of the winter holiday or early in the new year. So the selected firm will work with CDA to refine a more detailed scope of work and agree on specific deliverables for the final contract going to the Board of Supervisors by February 2022. All right, two ways to submit. This is getting to the details that I think are laid out pretty clearly in the document. You can submit by email or by hard copy. I'll just note there's the 25 page limit that we ask on narrative content. And then we have attachments. So the additional forms were required by the county that are in the RFP. And then there's optional attachments, you know, staff resumes, supporting graphics. That all falls outside of the 25 page limit. So hopefully gives you space to describe what your really cool approach is to this work. And with that, I really thank you for your attention. Apologize again that this is going to be a little a little stilted with how we navigate the questions given my audio challenges. Um, I think a way I'm going to propose we do this. I see folks have been answering questions already. We have some questions coming into the chat. Um, I think what we're going to do, just so I can tell when Jack is talking, Jack, yeah, let's use the raise hand. So I will first give something a pass. I'll send it to Jack. And Jack, Maybe when you're done speaking, put up the hand so that I know you've finished talking. A little less off. All right, so great. So I'm gonna start here with what's in the chat. And then those of you who submitted questions ahead of time by email, we will get to those. Um, all right. Uh, will the presentation be available after the meeting? Yes, it will be posted on the Marin County Contracting Opportunities webpage where the RFP is currently posted. If you access the RFP from the marinslr.org link, it's all connected online, so you'll still be able to get to this. And I'll also post a written Q&A document. All right, can you describe the difference between facilitation, public outreach, and public engagement? Great question. Facilitation, we have hired a facilitator, uh, Rainwater and Associates LLC, so we're working with Marine Rainwater. We are looking at facilitation as two pieces. One is some upfront process design. How do we structure ourselves ahead of time to create a process that can bring in feedback, that can minimize conflict, maximize input? So that's one aspect of facilitation. That's happening now behind the scenes. Active facilitation, we do have Rainwater and Associates contracted for facilitation support. We anticipate that being strategic support for focused conversations. So when I showed the, let me go back through my slides. When I showed our spectrum of different community engagement strategies, public meetings, some active working groups, Coastal Communities Working Group is a, a West Marin interest-based group. West Marin Advisory Group is a regulatory agency group we have for input. All of these spaces have opportunities for facilitation support. Um, I think where we're going to really use it is for structuring some more focused, smaller interest group based conversations as we get into the more complicated steps of adaptation planning. We do not envision the facilitator as setting up the room, being the DJ, DJ being the person running the public meeting, welcoming people, those responsibilities are going to fall on county staff and working with the hired consultant. Um, so that gets us to what I would call the public engagement, which are what are the events we can offer that invite people to show up, to bring their ideas, to weigh in on the process. But some of the structured thinking ahead of time on how we manage that flow of information, what types of engagement we are inviting, that's where we're getting some facilitation. Public outreach. I appreciate the question. My language is vague here. I think there's also public outreach, just getting information out there. Um, we are contracting with Golden Gate National Park Conservancy to help us think about some creative events we could host in the community to get people interested, share information. Um, so I think some of that is public outreach. Uh, media strategies, if we're putting ads out, flyering, that's some public outreach. Jack, anything you want to add there before I go to the next question? Um, I would say that uh, you know some of this, the details of how this will be worked out is part of the process that we'll be going through at the beginning when we bring all the consultants together. 
So um, we'll, we'll shake it out there. But I think that um, the, the different aspects, uh, Julia's really addressed them well there. And we'll follow up with written information. OK, thank you. <laughs> um, and we share the scopes for Point Blue, Dr. King, and Marie Rainwater. Great question. We do not yet have scopes formalized for Dr. King for the economic analysis. Um, we have a draft scope, but we want to refine that once we hire a firm under this current RFP so we can ensure. So you will, if hired, you would actively be part of confirming that scope of work. Likewise, for Point Blue, the ecological analysis has not yet been scoped or contracted. So again, there's the opportunity there to weigh in and help shape that. We do have an existing scope for Point Blue to conduct a cell phone locational data analysis, which is helping us get an early look at who our beach user communities are at Stinson. And that scope, yes, we can provide that. Um, Rainwater, we do have a, a task. Um, I could provide it. It's, it's, it. it's very vague. It's what I said, you know, it's just buckets of available time to help with process design and to help with facilitation. So I don't think there's a large amount to learn from that one. I can um, follow up on that. Okay. Thanks. More questions coming in. This is, is providing an approach to these different facilitation and engagement ideas in the response to RFP helpful, or is that something that is meant to be part of, or, oh, go ahead, Jack. Oh, no, I, I was just saying it would be helpful. Um, I will respond. OK. Um, providing an approach to facilitation and engagement ideas. If you have ideas for how we could improve our coordination across these different engagement, like we have scope facilitation professional, but we're over here running public meetings. If you have ideas that you're like, hey, this would be a really strategic way to leverage those resources and do a better job, we would love to hear it. Please do put it in your in your proposal. Um, that said, with the early team kickoff, that will be a detailed discussion so everyone knows what we arrive at as a project of work. Hope that answers that question. If I didn't, please put it again with a little more clarification in the chat. All right. Will the cell phone data be purely hotspot density information showing the most highly visited locations? Or would it include information that could be used for economic valuation or travel pattern analysis, such as origin and destination data demographics? Awesome question. Yeah, I don't want to take too much of our time today detailing the cell phone data analysis, but it's important to know, right? The study does both. So it does do a hotspot user density analysis of spatial patterns of usage at the beach, spatial with time components at the beach. Uh, we're able to access data that goes back over three years, so it's a pretty big data set. Um, but a particular interest to the county, the data allows us to do a point of origin study. So we're able to see where beach users are coming from. And that lets us actually get the granularity of understanding down to the census block level. So pretty good. Um, and we really need to know that as soon as we can so we can start shaping our community engagement approaches and really get out there communicating and trying to engage beach users who are not you know, as easily identifiable as a resident or a business owner at Stinson. So that first piece, the point of origin data, that analysis has begun and we expect some preliminary results early in 2022. And we're gonna wrap it out by about April of 2022. And then we'll get into the hotspot user beach visit patterns further through 2022 with the whole thing wrapped up by the fall. So that should be able to provide some good content over to the adaptation planning team as they're thinking about strategies and location of each asset. All right, great. I am gonna now shift myself over to, feel free to keep using the chat please, but I'm gonna shift myself to the um, questions that were received by email. I just ended my screen share. So we did have a question about our vast array of consultants and how we integrate everything together. I hope I clarified that to, to reiterate, we will start with a kickoff meeting across all of the county's consultants for this project to clarify roles, timelines, where scopes overlap, 
Communications are so critical to this that we have a unified message that we are bringing to the public across all these fronts and shared language. So that's really gonna be an upfront piece of getting all of our consultants on the same page. We had a question, how does the county see tangible progress being made toward a complex and challenging goal? Oh yeah, I'll put the questions in the chat. Let me do that right now. So thanks for that suggestion, whoever said that. There's the one question I just spoke to about how do we coordinate this uh, vast array of consultants. The next question that I am going to address, how does the county see tangible progress being made toward a complex and challenging goal with substantial public involvement in a three-year time frame? Yeah, and I like this phrase Jack says, it's gonna be a trick, right? We have a lot to do, but we do have a sense of what we mean by tangible progress. I think it's really, you know, threefold things, and then I'll turn it over to Jack. I see it as tangible progress is our process supports informed and sustained engagement of a diversity of Stinson Beach stakeholders in an adaptation planning process over three years. So we've gotten people, we've developed a shared level of knowledge, and they're still at the table and engaging and feeling involved and heard three years in. Um, and I think that's that's a that's a pretty big goal, and that'd be big progress. A second thing, um, tangible progress would be a clear, documentable, quantitative, and qualitative understanding of how specific adaptation strategies might perform over time for the specific coastal hazard conditions at Stinson Beach. So, starting today, we have a lot of good data. We've got a vulnerability analysis that identified the assets at risk, looked at sea level, some sea level rise scenarios. We had adaptation planning that broadly spoke to some county values, areas of opportunity, possible policy and project levers. But tangible progress would be starting to dial that down really specific to the Stinson Beach context. And then the third point to me that tangible progress is having demonstrated experience working with adaptation pathways planning for coastal hazards in Marin County. Um, I think that that is gonna be a real point of progress for us, thinking more about what our, our decision timelines are and our trigger points for adaptation. That's where we have some growth that's gonna be really valuable. So Jack, over to you on tangible progress. I think the main thing that we're trying to achieve is let people know what's coming down the pike at them. So there's a common understanding uh, among the entire community within and without the area of, of Stinson Beach. Uh, and then take that and let them know about what the possibilities are for, for dealing with that, that situation that's coming at them and what those alternatives are so that we, you know, people can make informed choices about what they want to do going forward. Um, that's that's my feeling, um, and uh, certainly I we'd love to hear your uh, your take on that on that issue. So. <laughs> All right. Next question. I'm sure Jack just clarified everything beautiful and I can't wait to hear it in the recording. So what level of engineering detail is expected? Will conceptual models be the expectation or more detailed plan sets? So we are very aware this is a limited budget for what we are asking. And conceptual designs would be the level that we would expect to result from this planning process. That said, if there is more detailed engineering data or detail available, thinking about that big universe of projects I showed, there are some things where we do have some more information that could be incorporated in and reflected. Um, then that would work well. So maybe things don't all achieve the same level of detail in the resulting adaptation strategies uh, roadmap, but we do recognize our budget limits and that that puts us in the realm of conceptual designs. All right, I'm going to Finish this. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I see a question just came in. Will any previously developed site specific models be made available? Yes. So the county, what the county has in its current 
purview from prior studies would be able to be used. Um, I think there's something to this question. I'm not quite quite getting the nugget of. So Dave, feel free to clarify at me. But um, we did do significant work with um, Cosmos sea level rise scenarios out of the USGS data. Um, so we'll have access to that prior work that was done that identified vulnerable assets. Um, we'll be refining some of the selected sea level rise scenarios for this next phase of adaptation planning, but there will be access to that prior work. All right. Another question that came in was for task three, the adaptation planning task, will a single deliverable be expected for each subtask? Good question. Deliverables are expected as part of task three. So CDA is flexible on what deliverables happen where within task three. What is critical is that the consultant's approach provides some interim work products that allow us to go have constructive public dialogue and solicit input into the adaptation planning process. So we need some things that we're able to take to the public that they can react against and respond to, um, but we are not prescribing that at each step there's a completely unique deliverable being handed. That is part of what we are asking in the applications that you clarify, you know, this would be an opportunity for a type of deliverable here. And maybe at this step, you can fold these things together and move it forward. Um, some things that do spring to mind to me when I say possible interim deliverables, compelling accessible visuals and communication when we get to evaluation criteria that lay out what they are. You know, maybe that's a matrix people can understand to see all the different things, considerations that we're weighing and be able to respond to that. Um, graphics that convey adaptation pathways, we're gonna need help communicating that. It's, I think it's a pretty complicated concept for folks who are new to the idea. So some interim deliverables that help us carry those conversations and solicit uh, public input are gonna be really important. Jack, anything you wanna add there? I would say that um, cost criteria too, you know, um, basically, uh, estimates of, of how much different adaptation uh, approaches might might cost uh, and in terms of you know upfront cost and operation and maintenance of those um, those items. Okay, question just came in. Cosmos and most other sea level rise models are fine planning tools not suitable for detailed site-specific analysis typically, and usually not that helpful for evaluating adaptation strategies. Not sure if more detailed modeling was done for some of the sub-area planning efforts. Good question. There is some additional modeling done um, being completed by National Park Service for fluvial flooding out of East Coot Creek, which is one of the, the main drainages that's been a, a, a big flooding um, source over the decades, if not centuries. Um, maybe Jack can speak to this further than me, but I will say, I think what, what Cosmos does get us and recognize there are definitely limitations on that modeling, but it's enough to say septics are going here and this road is significant, experiencing significant depth and duration of flooding impacts by this juncture. So agreed, not enough to carry like a, a detailed high level of engineering design, but since we're going for conceptual design, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's helping us arrive at the right level there. Um, and I'll turn it over to Jack. Yeah, I, um, I agree that we're not, we're not trying to des design projects whose next step will be implementation or the building of the projects. We're trying to get an idea of uh, comparable uh, information between different approaches and where that will point us in the future. So uh, again, as uh, Julia said, this, it's more at a conceptual level, not at a uh, design construction level. All right, next question. What GIS information are available for utilities in Stinson Beach? Electrical, gas, telecommunications, water, wastewater, others. Um, X 
excellent question. That is something that we CDA are taking on now. There is actually a data compilation effort being wrapped up for the safety element of the countywide plan, which is creating a data atlas. So we're talking with the staff leading that effort to figure out what there is and how we can compile it up. I realize that is not helpful to you right now as you understand what you're coming into when you write this proposal. Um, I'll turn it over to Jack in a second, but I just do want to clarify. It's one of those areas where we recognize that's a need and we're putting our staff time in now so that when a firm does come on board, you're not having to spend a significant amount of time digging up and finding that data that we're able to, here's what we've got and move forward. Yeah, the, um, as I'm writing into the chat right now, there really hasn't been um, significant change um, in in the condition of the assets. So, uh, like we say, it's close enough for government work at this point. So, we at the conceptual level, we're not going to spend a lot of our time, uh, and we don't want you spending a lot of your time specifying, uh, you know, new information because we just don't think that there's that much of it and we will try to supply that. Question on task 3.1, the first step in our adaptation planning process as we anticipated it in our scope of work in the RFP. What specific asset updates are needed since 2016? Another great question. Probably not a whole lot. Um, we put that in there we want to make sure we're not missing anything when we start this process. That said, there was significant asset identification done in support of the 2016 vulnerability analysis. So likely there's not much new. We do see it as a, a good opening point to involving public, inviting if there are additional things that folks felt were missed back in 2016. This is an opportunity to, to open that space up and see if there's anything there, but we at the county don't anticipate um, specific much in the way of new asset updates. Um, and there's one more question received by email. I'm going to put it in. I'm not sure if I spoke to it yet, so it's probably worth reiterating. In task two, there's understanding that the county's contracted rainwater as an engagement consultant. The facilitation text from the RFP describing the proposer's responsibilities in addition to the engagement consultant. All right, so the RFP said, the consultant who we're looking for under this RFP shall lead on developing creative engagement activities and tools for soliciting input during public meetings and ongoing stakeholder engagement, developing and delivering technical presentations, clearly documenting public input and providing meeting notes. Great question. We are looking for that creative engagement activities and tools we welcome them anywhere on our process. The more, the better. We really need them at those key junctures through the adaptation planning process, which we anticipated with a series of six public meetings whose themes are flexible. We put ideas in the RFP, but we really need those big public touch points. That's where we're gonna need a lot of consultant support on thinking about how do we get in a room and not just say, here's where we are, hand it back. You know, We're, we're looking for some creativity there. Um, we would be looking to the consultants to do the meeting notes for those large public meetings. Um, in addition to support from county staff, that is not a role we're putting on our hired facilitator. The facilitator could be brought into a public meeting if we anticipate um, it being one of the more difficult conversations, um, perhaps where there's some decisions being made or difficult trade-offs under discussion. Um, the facilitator could be a tool there, but we are looking to the consultants for ideas of how to go into those meetings, deliver technical information, but also solicit. Jack, anything further from you? I would just uh, clarify that the role of the consultant at, in those public meetings is to provide the technical information to be able to explain the, the technical information. Um, uh, let's say someone is challenged, um, and then our facilitator will step in and divert or otherwise deal with, with, with that issue. But 
uh, it's the substantive um, uh, data that that we're looking for from the consultant. Okay. And I see one that was answered in the chat, but I'm just going to read it to folks. Given that the vulnerability assessment is based on 2015-2016 asset data, will current and historical GIS sets, data sets, excuse me, be available to identify any changes in exposure since that time? Uh, and the answer provided is, we will do some updating, but we recognize there's not been a great deal of change, as I said. Um, we can solicit more information from the public. Again, we're going that means of engaging and asking if there's anything that folks want to see added in terms of vulnerable assets. We do think there's value there. That has gone well for us previously working with the West. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna just scan through the chat one more time to make sure I got everything. If anything else is on your mind, we still have 14 minutes. Um, All right. All right, it's looking to me like we got the questions. Again, I really wanna thank everyone for taking the time for participating in the most Kafka-esque Q&A. Um, really appreciate your interest. Uh, we're very excited. We, we do welcome the creative, you know, bring your ideas, your approach. We recognize that um, we're really excited to be leading this effort. We know we have a lot to learn as well. So we're excited to see your submittals. And um, thank you so much for joining today. So I'm going to stop this recording and we will be, I'll turn it over to Jack to close this out and then I will stop the recording. So again, thanks yeah. for joining and over to you, Jack. Uh, thank you for sticking with us through this rather difficult uh, um, arrangement. We're going to figure out what's, what's going on. I think there's a problem at the county, throughout the county. But again, if... Uh, we, we said that uh, we're not going to take any questions uh, after this, but considering what we have here, we'll take questions to the end of the week and share those with, with everyone else. And I'll let Julia know that because she didn't hear me. So thanks again and uh, uh, have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.